Salute, folks. It's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor, Alonzo Hall, your social media insurance broker, and I've returned today to wrap and tap on your head with another ADH Wealth Solution. Before I go in, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional the links are in the description of this video so today ladies and gentlemen i'm going to talk about something because <clears throat> you always hear about these people telling you to invest 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 but they never talk about risk right risk tolerance time horizon any of that they always always tell you oh yeah you know we're gaining a bazillion percent and you know, even when you take a loss, oh yeah, I took a 75% loss, but I made it back because I made 100% back. Well, according to Craig Israelison, PhD, we're looking at the math of gains and losses. So it simply says here, and I've been saying this all the time, if you invest $100,000 and you lose 20%, now you're down to $80,000. When you gain 20%, that doesn't bring you back up to $100,000. What is 20% of 80? Because 20% of 100 is 20. 20% of 80 is less than that. So let's see. One of the more compelling aspects of investing is the math of gains and losses. Very simply, a 50% gain does not allow a portfolio to recover from a 50% loss. For example, if you have $100 and you invested it and you get a 50% gain, you basically only gained a quarter of your money back. If you get a 100% gain, you've only earned $50. If you get a 200% gain, you've actually doubled your money. But people think a 100% gain is doubling your money, and it's not. So let's continue to read here. One of the more compelling aspects of investing is the math of gains and losses. Very simply, a 50% gain does not allow a portfolio to re recover from a 50% loss. In fact, a 100% gain is required to restore a 50% loss. Figure 1 demonstrates the needed gain to recover from a variety of different percentage losses. losses. So let's say you start at $1,000 and you lose 5%, meaning that you're down to $950. You would need to gain 5.3% to get back to that $1,000. Okay, now, if you lost 10%, you would have to gain 11.1% to get back to that $1,000. Let's look at some real numbers. In 2008, the market itself declined by 38%. So let's go here to 40. And if you had $1,000 and lost 40%, uh, that brings your balance down to $600. In order to get back to $1,000 from $600, you need a 66.7% gain. But let's go further. Let's say at that $1,000, you lose 75%, which especially with you crypto guys is very plausible. And your account balance goes from $1,000 to $250. The percentage needed to gain to restore loss would mean 300%. So you'd have to triple your money in order to get back to square one so investing is not for everyone the mathematical relationship between loss and gains is a reciprocal one needed percentage to gain to restore loss equals one divided by times one minus percent loss times minus one for example the needed gain to restore a 10 percent loss can be expressed as one divided by times one minus point ten close parentheses minus one or point one 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 or eleven point eleven percent thus the needed gain to restore the 10% loss is 11.11% as shown in figure 2. There is a non-linear relationship between losses and the required subsequent gain needed to recover from the loss. The term non-linear simply means that as the loss gets bigger, the needed gain to restore the loss increases at an increasing rate. 
as you notice, up top, 5% it was only 5.3. But then it more than doubled when you go to 10%, now it's 11.1. You go to 15, it's 17, right? At a 75% loss, you need to triple your money. So the road to recovery. <clears throat> so, for example, a portfolio loss of 35% requires a 54% gain to restore the portfolio to whole. So historically speaking, how long has it taken the S&P 500 to generate a 54% gain? The long and winding road to recovery. From 1970 to 2009, the S&P 500 index never had a one-year return in excess of 54%. The largest one-year return was 37.58% in 1995. Therefore, based on historical returns, the S&P 500 index over the past 40 years, a loss of 35% will require more than one year to recover. As shown in figure three, the S&P 500 index has a 17.8% chance of gaining 54% as a cumulative percentage return with a contiguous two-year period and thus recovering from a 35% loss. The probability of fully recovering from a 35% loss increases to 34.2% over a holding period of three years. There is nearly a 57% chance of, of recovery over a four-year period and a 61% chance of recovery over five years. All of these loss recovery estimates are based on the performance of the S&P 500 over the past 40 years, from 1970 to 2009. They assume that no money is withdrawn from the account during the recovery period and that no additional money is invested. Taxes and inflation have not been considered in this analysis, and as always, past performance do not guarantee future results. And then you'll look at figure three, the probability of recovery. So within, you know, there's a 0% chance to gain from a 65% loss in the first three years. It's going to take you 10 years to recover from a loss like that. A 10% loss, you got a 50% chance to recover in one year. But again, it's going to be highly more that you're going to recover in 10. So the smaller portfolio losses such as a 20 percent loss are more quickly resolved the s p 500 index generated a single year gain of 25 percent or more 25 percent being the minimum gain needed to restore a portfolio following a loss of 20 percent in 10 separate years between 1970 and 2009 therefore based on her historical return patterns there's a 25 percent chance that the s p 500 could recover from a 20 percent loss within one year there's a 72.2% probability of recovery from a loss of 20% within five years and a 93% chance of full portfolio recovery, at least in nominal terms, within 10 years. A more serious loss requires longer recovery time frames, if recovery is even possible. For instance, a portfolio invested completely in the S&P 500 that loses 50% has a 0% chance of recovery within one or two years. In fact, there's only a 7% chance of recovery within three years and only a 36% chance of recovery within five. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a PDF created by a PhD, right? Not by me. So he doesn't sell insurance. Right, but he's telling you about what all these false invest the rest people don't tell you, which is the math of gains and lo losses. So that's gonna be it for today, folks. Make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description of this video. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. And remember, folks, when people challenge you, they don't challenge you to challenge you, but they challenge you to challenge you. Accept the challenge. Salute.